What a night it has been. Thanks for hanging with us. We have just a, a couple last thoughts we want to share with you to close out this whole thing. Hopefully, uh, we gave you a, a lot to think about in whatever journey that you're on getting from here to there. And, Nate, because you have that kind of main character energy. True. No lies told. How does that play out in the here to there concept? Uh... I mean, I think, uh, first of all, hello, everybody. How you guys doing? Uh, I think, Jeff, when I, when I think about it, we have so many entrepreneurs in the room. We have so many creatives in the room, so many dreamers in the room. And every single time that you step out of the house to do something that has never been done before, you're literally a superhero. Literally, you are putting on a cape you were doing something that has never been done. And a lot of people are thinking to themselves, well, what I'm doing, I think it's been done. Well, what if Five Guys said the same thing? What if Shake Shack said the same thing? Because there's something that you were specifically created to do that is going to be unlike anything else that someone else has done, no matter what, if it was just a burger. Yeah. yeah, it's like the courage that Terrence was talking about, right? Like, it, you have to step forward in some way, yes. and that separates you from everyone else. Yeah, you know, and I, I, if you're going to look at it from a literary perspective, right, um, I, I like to look at it like if the, if the book is named after you, it just it doesn't mean that you're the author. Basically, there are going to be other people that are gonna be around you, that are gonna help you write those chapters. Mm. You will always co-write pieces of your life with someone, and that could either be good or bad. So if you are a main character, you have to realize who is alongside of you that is helping write those stories with you to succeed or to fail. And that's what I've kind of learned in my life, given that main character energy. I love it, I love it. Okay, so Jeff, it's my turn. You know, you know, Jeff, I actually have a book I prepared for this. So you have a paper, I have a book. Okay, so Jeff. He only wrote on the first page, y'all. He's got a whole book. I have a book. Now, that's true. It's only two pages, but I'm starting. It's a book. All right. Okay, so Jeff, talk about how you bring something into existence. Short runs mm -hmm. versus long projects. Yeah. So at Christmas, uh, my wife got me this book that kind of documented, if you guys have ever heard of Virgil Abloh, he was this amazing shoe designer. Um, I don't have any of his shoes. If anyone wants to give me some of his shoes, that'd be cool. They're very Why are expensive. you looking at me? I'm just looking for that main character. Uh, amazing <laughs> shoe designer. And I started, it kind of documented how some of these shoes that he created with Nike happened. And it showed like his creative process and there was a whole slew of shoes he did. It was something like 50 different designs that everyone, it was the cultural phenomenon of the last five years related to that aspect of, of fashion. He recently passed away. But um, those 50-ish shoes, he designed all of them in a matter of about three months. And it was like, it was, it was very fascinating because you saw these text messages and it showed it, clips of his phone, 2.52 a.m., 5.37 a.m. So, you know, like, it was like, show, and he was interacting with this friend of his that was working on it with him. And over the course of three months, he changed the trajectory of shoe fashion. And it, he had a deadline. He, he had did. to get it done. Now, he had 20-some years of preparation for those three months. True. I'm so glad you said that. He just right? didn't wake up one day. It was like, hey, 90 days, I got all these shoes. Right. He was going on this journey. Then all of a sudden, he realized this is an opportunity for my life. Yeah. Right? And he activated something that was remarkable. And that's where I feel like all of us have these opportunities at some point in our life to go all in on something. Like we've been preparing, 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 and at some point you have to do the thing that you've always been meaning to do but never got around to do. Mm. And I think that I was, it was so interesting. You know, I didn't know him. I don't know these stories about, but I'm reading this book and I'm going, wow. Over the course of three months, he changed 
fashion forever. And that's the opportunity I think people have. Now, is everyone Virgil Abloh? No, like, right? But I do think everyone has something in their life that they are meant to do and to be a part of. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to go after it for a short period of time and give it everything you have. I mean, Jeff, you, you, you actually nailed it. I mean, I wish... I mean, I think everyone who knows, uh, anybody, everybody, any people in here know about Virgil? Yeah? Yeah, we can, we can clap for that. I, I think, Jeff, the, the beauty of what you said is that, well, the gold in what you said is this. It took time for him to go into his prime. Mm -hmm. It took time for him to enter into his prime. So all of the things that he had went through, all the things that he had studied, when it was time for him to produce the very thing, then he actually realized what all of that that he went through was for. And he was able to produce all of that product within 90 days. Yeah, but also like in the last three weeks, we got more done on this event than the previous six months, right? Wow. So like you, when you set a time that you have to complete something, more gets done, it causes you to make decisions and move it forward. Now, is this like time that you're putting on your calendar or is yeah. this time that you're yeah. putting on social media? No, no, no. This is time where it's like if you have an idea right now that you're trying to get off the ground and make it happen, there's two things you have to do. You have to set a time when you're going to release it and you have to put money down to create a release party. There has to be two things that happen simultaneously because if nobody knows that that event is going to happen to release it and you didn't put money down to actually reserve the place, you don't have a commitment in place, right? So it's like a combination. If you really are passionate about this thing that you want to do, passion's not enough. You have to actually dedicate time and money to make it come into existence. Yeah, we can, we can clap for that. Time Listen, and money. Tadashi now has to get that retreat done. Am I right? Y'all just put up the money for this to happen. Oh, no, I'm calling him every week. Right? Yeah, I'm like, hey, man, but when's the retreat? Right. I'm ready to join in on that. All right, Nate. So a couple, one, one last question for you. Do you imagine this journey that each of us is on? to be a privilege or a sacrifice? Okay, well, you threw me a curveball. That wasn't in my book. <laughs> Honestly, Jeff, I, I, I look at it as both. Um, when I look, you know, back over my career and the things that I've been able to be a part of, the sacrifice was I wasn't able to do all the things that my friends were doing. Like, I remember in college, um, I mean, I, I went to parties, but I didn't go to a lot of them. But I remember being in college, and I, was, uh, I had this little Casio uh, keyboard. And my now wife, Tuary, yeah. <laughs> so you see how crazy that is? That, yeah. So my now wife, Tuary, and a couple of my other friends, they would peek in the room and say, you suck. Literally, and if you guys know Tuare, she and I would be like, ting, 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 ting. But in my head, in my head, I was like, you guys, you, you guys don't see where, where I'm going. You don't see where I'm going. And I had to, I had to sacrifice my ego because I, I wasn't that good. I had to sacrifice going out. I had to sacrifice a real job because I wanted to, to put my heart into something that I believed against everybody else believing what I could do. I feel like in this moment that when salmon have to lay their eggs, they actually have to go upstream against the current to lay their eggs in still water. And I think most creatives, they have to sacrifice their time, their strength, their ability to go against the current, to do something that they believe they were born to do, to birth something into the earth. So it's a sacrifice to do that. But yet it's a privilege that I get to do it. 
Because not everyone can do what I can do. Not everyone has my fingerprints. So not everybody can touch something and hear music the way I hear it. Not everyone can look at somebody and say, hey, they belong to Go on America's Got Talent. Everyone doesn't have my eye. Now, that doesn't necessarily make me special, but what it does is I just recognize that you're the same way. No one can do what you do because you were created differently from me. So it's me knowing that I'm privileged because I'm me, but I made the sacrifice that I may be able to live in that privilege. So it's both. That's good. Well, based on what you heard tonight, hopefully you're encouraged in whatever journey that you are on to bring into existence and take it further along that journey. The process will be complicated and messy that people talked about earlier, but it will take courage to make it happen. I believe this community is a group of people that care deeply about those journeys. And I've seen it. I've seen them support it like we did just a second ago. I've seen it encourage other people and challenge them and walk with them every step of the way. It's a really beautiful thing.